Avengers Assemble. Assemble. Avengers Assemble. Avengers Assemble. Hello and welcome back to Piranha Comics for your weekly comic book update. My name's David, I'm the host, apparently, and I'll be taking you through the number ones and other significant issues of the week. Sorry about there not being a video last week, the bank holiday delivery really got away from me there. Thursday. Why would you deliver to me on a Thursday? So if you want to know what came out that week, check the newsletter, I guess. Starting off with Marvel. Avengers Assemble Omega. That was like the third try and I got it right. Yay. So this is the end of Jason Aaron's run on the Avengers. This is the end, making way for Jed McKay to come in and take over. And uh, I could not be more excited about that prospect. Come on, Jed. Come on, Jed. Captain America, Unforgiven one-shot. This is part three of the Unforgiven one-shot series. So Spider-Man, X-Men, then Captain America. Do good of vampires are back again. Doing what they do. Which is good. Hallow's Eve number two. Hallow's Eve is actually one of my favourite books coming from Marvel right now. Like, it's not often you see a new character come in with this weird, slightly overpowered power set and actually face the consequences of things that they're doing. I really like this, along with the other title that Erica Schultz is writing, X-23 Deadly Regenesis. I really like them both, so I really hope to see more from this writer. Hellcat number two. First one of this was really weird. I know the angle they're going for. They're basically giving her her own demon in a bottle, and that's really quite cool considering her recent association with Iron Man. I know the whole former child star angle is very, very real, and I did enjoy the first issue. So I guess we'll see where it goes from here. She-Hulk number 12, or 175. This Shulky series is genuinely my favourite thing coming out of Marvel right now, apart from Moon Knight. Don't disrespect the moon. This is so cleverly written. It, it's a book where nothing actiony happens, and yet you're still completely engaged. It's a similar concept to Rainbow Rowell's Runaways. You have character-driven stories as opposed to action-driven stories. Yeah, I really, really enjoy this book. Warlock Rebirth, number one. Coming after Silver Surfer Rebirth, I'm assuming. Marvel are doing a lot of these vintage-style stories right now, and I'm, I'm actually a fan of the idea. In an age where people are genuinely yearning for simpler times, simpler comics, this seems like a good way to go. Especially because, you know, Adam Warlock will be making his movie debut soon, so, uh... Get him out there. Moving on to Detective Comics Comics. DC Silent Tales, number one. Number one is not accurate, it's a one-shot. It's exactly what it says on the tin. It's someone telling stories through silent art. They're telling the story with the art as opposed to with the words. Love the concept of this. Really, really cool idea. Also, the variant cover by Gabrielle Barr and Fabio Moon doesn't, doesn't hurt my little Umbrella Academy loving soul either. Nope. I'm definitely buying this. <laughs> Superboy, Man of Tomorrow, number one. My boy Connor's back. My boy is back. Since Bendis brought Superboy back in his Young Justice title, we actually haven't seen a whole lot of him. He was in Young Justice and he's been in and out of the Superman comics since then, but we haven't had a genuinely Connor-focused story in a very long time. The Superman with attitude, Connor Kent. We love him. By this book, so DC keeps making more stories for Connor, but because, please. And we're moving on to Image. No one number two. The Brubaker-esque neo-crime thriller is back. I am loving this. The first issue of this was so, so cool. The concept is super unique, like this digital vigilante who accidentally gets people killed. I haven't seen anything like this before, and I doubt I ever will again. And it's part of the Radiant Black universe, which honestly just makes it even better. Terror War number one. I don't know a whole lot about this book, the cover intrigued me, so I ordered it. <laughs> but it looks like it could be a lot of fun. Aside from the name being Terror War, I guess. That's... <laughs> what an amalgamation. And Boom Studios. The Expanse, Dragon's Tooth, number one. Look at that Christian Ward cover and tell me you don't want to read this. Genuinely. I love Christian Ward, man. Look at this. <laughs> also, The Expanse TV show is probably one of the best sci-fi TV shows that's ever been made. So, yeah, definitely read this. Last, but by no means least, from Dark Horse, All Eight Eyes, number one. Spiders are creepy, bro. <laughs> Capitalizing on the same thing that thousands of B-movies have since the 80s, All Eight Eyes is bringing the horror back to spiders. Because of course it is. Because of course it is. We've been overdue for another reboot of Eight-Legged Freaks. Here it is. <laughs> and I do actually have a few new trades to talk about this week as well, which is always good. From Marvel, Guardians of the Galaxy by Al Ewing. This copy is spoken for. Richard, come get your book. But this is the newest run aside from the number one that came out last week. 
Al Ewing's a phenomenal writer, man. He took the Hulk and he made him interesting again for the first time in many, many years, making him immortal, giving him this brand new personality that's not afraid of anyone. Chef's kiss, man. Also, the work he's doing with the X-Men on X-Men Red. So good. So good. This is well worth your time. Well worth your time. And from DC, I have a couple. Sandman Universe Nightmare Country Volume 1. This is actually a nice direct market exclusive cover. Ooh. Ooh. So you can only get it from comic shops. And we have a copy. Come get it. And last, but definitely not least. Batman Superman World's Finest Volume 1 The Devil Nezza. I love this book. I love this book so damn much. It's this silly Silver Age book that at the same time as bringing you back to a time when comics are simpler, it still gives you world-ending stakes. But nobody's taking it as seriously because, of course, it's a Silver Age book. It's a nice reminder that comics don't have to be 100% serious all the time, and they can still be absolutely phenomenal while doing so. Also, the guest appearance from the Doom Patrol doesn't hurt. Yeah, boy. All right, that's going to be it from me this week. If you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe, and subscribe to the newsletter in the description down below, because that gives you a full list of everything that came out, not just the ones that I think look pretty. I will see you next week for more brand new comics. Yeah, boy.